Hey guys, it's Brie here from Blossom and Branch Farm and you might be wondering why there's a giant tarp behind me. It's because I just cover cropped and we are gonna talk about cover cropping today. I know cover cropping can be really intimidating. If you're new to my channel, you might not know this, but I don't like to add anything to my soil, especially things that come in bags or bottles. I just don't think it's the way that nature intended us to grow things. I think that nature has a perfect system worked out and we just like to fight it and control it. So instead, I rely mostly on cover crops for my soil's needs and my soil is very happy and perfectly productive that way. So we do soils test and we'll be talking about that. That's a whole separate video. Next week we'll be talking about our soils testing and how we do that. My soils tests indicate that I have plenty of minerals, nutrients. I have about the equivalent of 60 tons per acre of nitrogen in my soil already that the soil life can mineralize and use. So I don't need a lot, but I do like to cover crop. I like to get living roots in my soil. I like to build biomass because I'm not adding much compost to my soil anymore because I have high phosphorus levels and adding a lot of compost can tend to elevate those phosphorus levels. So I don't do that. So I have to get organic matter into my soil another way so for me that's cover crops so I like to cover crop in the fall that's my preferred way to do it is to do it in the fall but the beds behind me had dahlias in them so we weren't able to cover crop them because we pull out the dahlias after last frost everything else got cover cropped in the fall we let it die back and then in the spring we just plant right into the plant residue these ones that didn't get cover crops in the fall I like to do in the spring so right now we're about seven weeks before last frost we still have cold night temperatures but our soil is starting to warm up and that's why I have this tarp on the soil actually because this tarp is going to help get my soil temperatures warm enough to where I can get these plants to germinate. I'm going to be doing a cover crop of peas because the peas will help add a little bit of nitrogen, they're easy to germinate and they'll grow in cold temperatures. Now you wouldn't want a cover crop in the spring with something that is cold sensitive because those aren't going to germinate in cold temperatures, they're not going to grow in cold temperatures, you won't get a good response and if you try to seed those things into your soil in the spring what's gonna happen is they're not gonna grow and then as soon as you plant your tomatoes and things in there your cover crop is gonna grow and make a mess now there are a couple keys with doing a legume cover crop for nitrogen like I'm doing you need to have an inoculant this inoculant might already be in your soil if you've applied it within the last few years you don't have to do it every year but legumes need a specific nitrogen fixing bacteria in order to fix that nitrogen down and into the soil so when you pull up the root you'll know because there will be little nodules on the roots of the plants and that means that nitrogen has been fixed onto the roots and into the soil without this bacteria it just doesn't work as well you won't get as good of results so if you're doing all this effort make sure that you're inoculating your legumes. And you can't really use too much, so don't worry about that. The other thing is that, unfortunately, you can't grow beans and peas in the garden and just assume that they're going to add nitrogen. Now, there is some evidence that the mycorrhizal fungi actually form a little network under the soil, and they may give a little bit of nitrogen to neighboring plants, but it's minimal. I hear this all the time, plant beans next to your blah, blah, blah to add nitrogen. It doesn't really work that way. Legumes aren't just this, like, loving wonderful plant that just want to give nitrogen to everything no they're growing the nitrogen for themselves they fixate the nitrogen for themselves so what they do is they take that nitrogen that they fixate and then they put it up into the plant for seed production so the beans and peas that you and i like to eat they're not just giving it to other plants uh, they grow it for themselves so if you let them grow beans and grow peas and go to seed essentially then we're not getting the nitrogen benefits into the soil because the plant is using the nitrogen that it's fixated putting it up into the beans and the seeds of the plant so at that point once we've reached flowering stage and we've gotten to seed stage all of that nitrogen is now up in the top part of the plant it's not in your soil anymore so you cannot harvest beans and peas and legumes and get the nitrogen benefits if that makes sense you have to do one or the other so when we're growing legumes as a cover crop we have to terminate or kill it before it gets to that seed production stage if we want to keep the nitrogen down and in the soil i know that's a bummer because i'm sure you were thinking oh, great i can grow beans and peas and fava beans or whatever and also get the nitrogen benefits it just doesn't really work that way that's not the way that legumes are intended to work when we're talking about adding nitrogen to your soil. That doesn't mean you can't grow them and you will still get a little bit of nitrogen still left in the roots after those plants have gone to seed, but it's not really gonna be enough to make much of a difference in your garden. All right, let's get going. I'm gonna show you how I did this. So what I'm doing here is I'm just removing this leaf litter that has been covering the beds for the winter. I will just leave these leaves here in the walkways as a weed suppressant. 
And if you're getting wind, you can just wet down those leaves or you can put um, a tarp over them just to help weigh them down until the wind dies down. Spring is our windy, windy time. I often get asked about this. I do leave my irrigation lines in over the winter. Uh, we have a very thick, we have the thickest uh, irrigation tubing that you can order. And so that helps give some protection to the tubing. And then we also cover it with leaves so it's not exposed to the elements. So I just prefer to leave it in place. I find there's less damage to it if I just leave it in the field. That's just myself personally. I know that's not true of everyone. So you can see, here's what our soil looks like after it's been sitting with this leaf cover on it over the winter. It's really nice soil. There's a nice chunk of clay right there. We do have clay in our soil, not a bad thing. Clay is an underrated soil type, I think. But a nice chocolate cakey texture, this is because we have good active soil life breaking down organic matter and that's always cycling the nutrients here in the soil. So very nice to plant into. So we're just gonna treat the seeds. We're gonna take this packet, I'm gonna put it in with my seeds. You can't use too much, so don't worry about it. And then I'm gonna moisten the bag and I'm gonna get all of these seeds covered with this inoculant. These are just field peas. I'm going to go ahead and just scratch the surface of the soil to help bury these down. So we do want them to be mostly covered. I just use my hands and I just scratch the soil up to get them buried. All right, so we've got that planted. I'm gonna replace my irrigation lines and then I'm gonna pull a tarp over the top just to help hold some moisture in the soil and help these germinate. Once I get this watered, I'm gonna go ahead and tarp it. That tarp is not only gonna help keep the moisture in until these germinate, it's gonna help keep the soil temperatures a little bit warmer because it's still really early in the season. All right guys, so that's it. These should germinate in a few days. I like to do peas if I have to do a nitrogen fixation cover crop in the spring because they're quick to germinate. They can germinate and grow in cold temperatures and they're really easy to terminate. So depending on how big these get, I can either crimp terminate them, I just take a board, smash them down, I can graze my sheep on them, or I could take a surface tiller and just till them right into the surface of the soil wait about a week and then we'll plant. I don't like getting too thick and lush of a cover crop in the spring because I find that it tends to suffocate out the soil life. If you crimp a really thick, hardy cover crop, sometimes you can get suffocation of the soil life underneath because it just gets too anaerobic under there if you have too dense of a cover crop. So I like the peas in the spring. Again, they are quick, they're easy to terminate. We'll come back and show you termination when we're ready to do that stage. But for now, what you need to know is that you need to terminate when they're right about flowering stage and before they've gone to seed production. Just make sure that you're inoculating them and that you're terminating them before they go to seed. Do those things, you're gonna be set to go with some good nitrogen in your garden in the spring the way nature intended. All right guys, we'll see you next time in the garden.